Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is AP Physics Essentials video 132 on thermal equilibrium, which is a complex way of saying if we have two objects that are connected, they have different temperatures, eventually they'll end up the same temperature. And two things in my computer right now that are generating heat are the graphics processor and the CPU. And so as they do uh, calculations, they generate heat, and that could damage the computer. And so what scientists use is a cooler object called a heat sink. And what happens is as that's connected to those other processors, it's transferring heat to the heat sink, and then lots of times a fan will blow that away. And so if you have two objects with varying temperatures, what will happen, thermal energy will be transferred from the higher temperature to the lower temperature, and eventually they'll achieve thermal equilibrium. What does that mean? They're the same exact temperature. And so the amount of thermal energy that's transferred from the hotter to the colder object is related to the mass of the object and also the temperature. So if the object on the left is much more massive than the one on the right and a higher temperature, it's going to transfer more energy than if it had a lower mass, lower temperature. And this is all based on conservation of momentum. So the molecules on the left side, when it was warmer, are moving faster. As they collide with those on the right side, they're transferring that momentum to the right side. And so eventually, since momentum is conserved, they all eventually have the same temperature over time as those collisions start to equalize. So if we look at a simulation of that, I'm going to take an iron object and I'm going to put it on a brick object and we can see that the temperatures don't change. And the reason why is they have the same temperature. Now let me heat up the iron. So I'm giving it a higher amount of kinetic energy. The molecules are moving around. We can measure that by using a thermometer. Now what happens as I put it on the brick? You can see it's lowering the temperature, but where is that energy going? It's going to the brick itself. What happens after time? Eventually, we've done it right now, we've achieved thermal equilibrium. They're going to be the same temperature. I could do the same thing with the water. So I'm going to heat up the iron. I'm adding more energy to those molecules. They have a higher amount of momentum. What happens when I throw it into the water? You can see there's a decrease in the temperature of the iron, increase in temperature of the water. Eventually, due to conservation of momentum, they're the same. What happens if I cool it down? So now I'm removing energy from that. It's actually going into the ice itself. What happens? Now I see a decrease in the water, increase in the iron, and so it's easy to figure out where that thermal energy is going. It's always going from the higher object or the hotter object to the colder object. Now this is macroscopically looking at it. What happens microscopically? Well, if you look at it, let's say we have these two objects, the one on the left and the one on the right. Which one has a higher temperature? Well, it's going to be the one on the left. You can see the molecules are going faster. They have higher kinetic energy. But watch what happens, and it'll be really subtle, but I'm going to connect these two together. The one on the left, remember, is going to have higher molecule speed than the ones on the right. And so if we watch what happens when they're connected, you can see they're colliding along that margin. And as they're colliding along the margin, they're transferring some of that momentum. What happens eventually, they end up at the same molecular motion or the same temperature. And did you learn to construct an explanation for what's going on as we achieve thermal equilibrium, not only at the macroscopic level, but the microscopic? I hope so, and I hope that was helpful.